Skullgirls is a darling of the FGC. Blessed with chaotic, expressive gameplay and that sweet, sweet rollback, it's hard not to love the game on some level, particularly when you get a character like Squiggly on the screen. A hybrid charge stance character with a deep kit, Squiggly is well loved by the community. One of her biggest proponents is the competitor Triviality, or Triv for short. Triv uses Squiggly as the anchor on his team of three, an unorthodox position for this character, but one he's confident in, with results to back him up. Today, Triv walks us through the secret sauce with Squiggly. What is up y'all, KRC Pinto here. Today, I have a special guest for you. We've got Triv here doing the inaugural Skullgirls episode of Secret Sauce. Triv, how you doing, man? I am doing wonderfully, Pinto. Uh, how do you want to start? Er Ooh, that's a good question. So typically, I start with some preference-based questions. So we're going to move through a couple things that you like about Squiggly and some, some of the way you play her on like a conceptual level. And then we're going to talk about some more game plan oriented stuff. Sound good? Yeah, sounds good. First up, super low ball. What's your favorite move of Squiggly's and why? Can be a normal, a special, a super? Uh, like best. That's so hard. That's so hard. Honestly, um, so I like two moves, which is her forward heavy punch, like the overhead. I just, cause like this forward heavy punch is so mean. Cause it like, you can just do like crazy shit, like low, low overhead, 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 overhead. And then you can even be, so if you, I also like doing this where it's a mind game where if I know the opponent isn't going to swing and I want to get a free low, I'll do, I'll do the startup and cancel it and then just do startup low. How do you cancel it? So, put for that. So if you, when you want to cancel any of Squiggly's normals, right? Every, like in this game's rules, if to cancel a normal, you can cancel it and do a special, right? Mm -hmm. So because her things have like, um, I'm not super familiar in the frame data, but because like there is startup, if you're quick enough, you can do the special. Now every one of Squiggly's grounded specials, or at least most of them, have like this duplex property where you enter the stance that corresponds to the special. And then when you let go of the button, the special comes out. So if I do a punch special, which enters this stance, I can cancel it with a kick and then exit the stance. So you're that fast. You're doing so, six heavy punch into like a so two, like three, it would six, be six heavy opposite. yeah six heavy punch two three six light and then hitting a kick and then right? going into the low from there. Yeah, that is pretty impressive. In Thank you. Speed. <laughs> And uh, honestly, all it takes is practice. I play on a 360 pad. I don't play on Hitbox. I don't play on um, pad. It's literally just, I started playing this game on Xbox Live Arcade and uh, the 360 pad has always been the most comfortable for me. You play the game on like an Xbox 360 controller? Yeah, yeah, Xbox what? 360 controller. That's yeah. crazy. I love it. And you can do that that fast on that D-pad or are you using the so stick? I use analog stick. Oh, so, uh, the, crazier. so the trick is more like, um, I'm getting this canceled by doing um, two, three, six grab. So I'm basically doing grab. You can do the forward grab input. The problem with this sometimes is that if you cross yourself up, um, one of Squiggly's supers is a super punishable command grab, which is two, one, four, two, one, four grab. <laughs> so like if I get crossed up, like let's say I wanted to do like, right, like I can't do that because I just crossed myself up. But yeah, it's probably that move. And then like favorite special is definitely just doing like Dragon Punch. It is the truest Dragon Punch in this game. She literally screams Dragon Punch. I can loop it into itself. It's just fun. Leviathan is like about as close to a dragon as you can get. So. Pretty much. Let's, um, let's talk about assists. So Skullgirls is a game where you get to select your assists. You have all the options in the world. What assist do you roam with Squiggly and why? Uh, so with Squiggly, I run Dragon Bite, right? Which is, it's her lockdown assist. The only other assist you'll really see a lot, like this this isn't like a groundbreaking assist, like most people run Dragon Bite assist. Um, other people like to run um, as an assist her crouching low, her crouching fierce, because it's multi-hit. They both operate on a like a lockdown sort of function. So I run Dragon Bite because it gives me more time. I can set up projectiles while they're getting moved away and like 
get really sick conversions. I can get more time to charge, like, Peacock Special. And Lockdown is really important. So I think that this game has Absolute Guard. So if you push block, like, a low and then block high, you'll be blocking both directions. So you, it'll, like, it would be impossible to get high load. Um, if you hit, if you have an assist, like her crouching light, for example, that would hit low, and then they push block that, you're basically just giving them an all guard for free. If you can't really all guard a mid, so you get like easier mix up options. So like if I'm in Peacock, I can like go into like an instant air dash overhead or literally just hit him with a low while they're getting hit. And just the the time to set up stuff, like both of the other characters I play are set play characters, which like having time to like just throw stuff while they're getting hit is really important, especially on Robo, who is a resource character also. She needs heads to do specials. So like getting the ability to get two heads while they're being hit is like very good in match. Gotcha. Um, so one of Squiggly's mechanics is that she can, like, charge her stances, and then, like, the maxed out charge will give her, like, the, a superior version of the special move she does next. Does charging up impact the assist? Yes. So, the so like, um, I'll just show you the two specials. So I run Dragon Bite Assist, where, let me get rid of it. So if you do Uncharged, it's, the moves themselves are slower, she only gives four hits, it's less time. If you charge it, you get like three more hits and it does it. Usually it's whatever. There is a, there really isn't like a huge difference where it's like, I need charged assist. Right. But, um, uh, but the, the mechanic itself is just, it's really more so for Squiggly's benefit than as like an assist benefit. And you can't really do, you can't do like a forced charge assist. So there's not really much to it. Okay. Do you think that this is like her best assist in your opinion, like overall? No, no, there is no best assist. There is what's best for you because every assist does different things, right? It's not, it's sort of like, you know, I don't know. It's like I, I see Doom players who run Beam and Doom players who run Missiles. It's literally just what works for your team. And for my team, it's Dragon Bite, right? Like my team will perform better if I have Dragon Bite, but I know other people like Parasol players or Eliza players who would want her crouching low because those characters have like less mix up options or they benefit from having a low because they have like different it's just the tools that benefit my team are most benefited from this specific assist that i've chosen right so i don't think there's like a best assist you do something kind of unorthodox you run squiggly as your anchor character typically yeah. not her main position yes. but it works for your team can you talk about that a little yes. bit? why that okay so Honestly, just like coincidence, when I first made my team, it was just like, um, if I'm being honest, Squiggly, I wanted to play these three characters, right? And typically as Peacock, I'm, I have to do, assist order is weird. So typically as Peacock, right, uh, to call an assist, it's um, like, I use macros, so like, I don't know specifically. It's like medium punch, heavy kick, and then medium kick, heavy punch for your two different assists which is like really weird. So I use macros. So the thing is that Peacock uses heavy punch for her like zoning loop. So during the heavy punch, because this is technically a normal, I get to call an assist, which assists in the zoning loop. So it's much because I'm hitting a heavy punch and that's part of an assist call. I can't really call Wiggly as easier as I can just call Robo during it. So I can just go ham with it. So that's why Robo gets the mid position. Right? Also, like, if I really wanted to convert, I could do the DHD options are better. Right? So, like, it just works well for Robo. Like, and I just, like, experimented this after the fact. Um, Squiggly has a lot of benefits of Anchor, because the thing is that, right, like, she, her assist, you can, her tag in, because it's tied to this grave, you can use it as, like, a mix up option right which is like really powerful and like because my team are zoners which do nothing but throw specials and build meter because even if you whiff a special you're building meter squiggly a character who's really benefited from having meter for like full screen confirms call outs right 
she she benefits being an anchor to this team because she's completely charged when she comes in. And another thing too is that you can get her out and get characters in and give them time to do stuff. So like, SBO has this weird property where on the ground it'll do the full Rekka, but if you have, you can juggle opponents. So like, I can have them juggle it. So as an anchor, that's really good because when I want to get point characters in or when I want to get mid characters in or squiggly suffering, I have time to tag and call an item and do full combo set play, right? So like, other characters don't really have that as strong as Squiggly does, where I can just DHC, I'm in my install, I got three heads, which is Robo's max, and I'm doing full combo. Like, she is great as, like, an anchor. And just her, I, I don't want to say her solo potential is, gr I, I have fun playing the solo Squig. I feel like as an anchor, you have to really play a character that you're most confident with on by themselves. Because worst case scenario, if you're getting bodied in a match and you lose your first two characters, your last character is the one that's going to be coming in without an assist. So like the solo squiggly is just, she has an overhead, she has a low, she can convert off of grab. She can, if people want to run away from you, they're giving you resources. So people don't want to run away from squiggly. So you're not really going to see like squiggly getting lamed out. She's really tiny. Hold on. Where are the hitboxes? Like, she is small. Like, Peacock is small, but this is small. She can low pro Look at how small her hitbox gets when you're doing this light kick. I mean, I don't know. And then it's just like, there's so much fun stuff to do with this anchor because, like, it's sort of like, if anyone's ever played Darkest Dungeon, my team really isn't meant to be like, you know, okay, Peacock's in. Oh no, Peacock died. Now Robo's in. Oh no, Robo died. Now Squiggly's in. I sort of play the like a carousel where I like to switch out a lot depending on the situation or because literally it's just in my head okay I'm not having as much fun anymore so I have like a lot of tag setups that combo into each other to get characters in that I want to get in right so like it's it's like a carousel and there's so much synergy with each other. If I want to get Squiggly in, out of the game and I want to just hit, I can do this. The er, like this specifically because it's tied to a position on the screen and not a position on the stage, sort of like on a different layer. And Peacock has a teleport. I just did a full screen cross up for free. All right, and people never block that. Dude, I would have never blocked that. I didn't realize it was gonna do that. That's kind of right. Nuts. That or literally, it's like. And it doesn't even need to do that. If I want to get out of there, I can just put this there. There's a giant hitbox that isn't going away, and I can get my heads, be an install, and then just go into my like zoning pattern. Right? So like Squiggly has a lot of ability to get herself in, and she has a lot of ability to get out. So there's not really like, you know. Like her her value as an anchor, I've found. You know, it she works for me, so like. And just you know, she helps set things up. So like, I typically, like, when I'm out and not in, I use Robo's assist to get the zoning. And then when I'm in, I'm calling Squiggly to give me mix-up options, right? To get my set play in. Let me clear this, okay. This is like a team, I'm pretty sure there's like a consensus on like a team building thing. So like a very common anchor that you like to see a lot is Big Band. Cause he has a lot of assist value, he gets characters in right i don't really need an assist to get me in or i have an assist to get me in since so peacock can sort of do this thing where i'm approaching and throwing more items at you like her mobility is crazy so squiggly doesn't really need to do that job squiggly just sort of needs to stabilize so like if peacock is at half health i can just get her out of there right Having characters that can leave projectiles on screen gives you a safe tag. These characters can combo into each other's tags, so... Like, there's no struggle, really. You know, I'd some, I, I, I've never really thought about this, because it's, it's always just sort of like... Okay, when I'm in Squiggly, I want my charges, and I want to be in, right? So depending on the state of the game is depending on how I play. Yeah, so... So, like, if I have Robo Assist, I can just jump in. 
with you, like you're a Dragon Ball player, it's just beam assist in a game where not everyone has a beam assist. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, it used to be like that. It used to be like two so, options. <laughs> so like beam assist in this kind of game is so good for Squiggly's approach, right? And even if I don't need to approach, if I can get my charges at full screen, like I'll be okay. Cause like Squiggly has so many full screen options. I have a full screen low. I have a pull in that I can convert off with meter and Squiggly is going to have meter cause I play two zoners, which should do nothing but generate meter. Um, her air approach is really good, just in general, because it's like... Let me see if I can get past my own zoning. <laughs> there, there right go. there. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So, so like, she can just wade through the gaps when I'm not bad at the game. So she has that ability, so she's tiny, so it's easy to get into her gaps. Her double jump is really strong because she's really small. She has really good air normals. This this air normal is ridiculous, right? Because, like, well, let me clear this demo. Okay, so, like, it can combo into itself, which is ridiculous. The, like, having your main air-to-air -air combo into itself is ridiculous, because if you're throwing it out, you can confirm it into itself. So, like, being able to confirm an air-to-air -air into an air-to-air -air you were already gonna throw out is just sort of like... It's like being able to flowchart for free. It's yeah. so good. So is there, usually, like, a high restriction to that? High restriction? What do you mean? Like a like? Is uh, there? What's the threshold for where you're too low for it to combo into itself? Is there one? I don't think there stuff? is. No, it's just a link. Nice. It's yeah, it's just a link because I'm not canceling it into itself. So like, there are links in Skullgirls, and sometimes they're a bit jittery. But if you if I'm just in a match throwing it out, like if I'm just mentally like throwing out the normal, it's probably gonna combo into itself because like I'm just throwing it out and it usually works. And it's a very active hitbox too, so like, because it's active, usually it'll be easier to link it into itself because what will happen is that the they'll get hit towards the end of it, and that'll make like them go into the full hit stun towards the end of it, so the link becomes easier because I'm already done with the first hit because they got hit towards the tw tail end of it, as opposed to this link, which is them getting hit by it immediately because I'm comboing into it from a launcher. Like as an air-to-air, -air, it's just ridiculously good. So, so let me let me see if I can summarize what we got so far for just general neutral game. We're trying to get charges. We've got strong air normals to work our way in with good hitboxes, and then this air normal that can chain into itself. And she's got good double jump capabilities, and she can kind of close the gap. Is that basically where we're at? Yes. At the so yes. So she's a gap closer. She has a lot of tools to close the gap. She herself can close the gap. Her assists help her close the gap. So it's sort of like. I wouldn't say rush down, because I'm not just running in there. I'm sort of like carefully weaving a path until I'm inside the character. And like fishing for mistakes at full screen, like a full screen assist call or something. Okay. Right? So like, oh, hold on, I screwed that up. Yeah. So like, hey, you're calling an assist at full screen to assist your zoning. This move, which has hit stop, cancels into this. The screen is locked. I just killed a character. So she's a character that capitalizes on mistakes. So you, when you weave in, you're sort of like trying to fish for a mistake up close. When you're at full screen, you're looking for a mistake. You're just looking for openings. Like you're weaving and trying to get in and trying to do what you can do. And it's not mindless. You're not just like, I have an air dash to get in. I have a lot of moves that actually get me out as opposed to get in. I have a lot of pokes, which can reset neutral. It's it's like a carefully laden path that I am trying to traverse. And it's interesting that amidst all of that carefully woven neutral, she straight up has a fuck neutral move. She does have a fuck neutral button, but the thing is that like, there is startup to it if it's uncharged, right? And like, if, if, you, if I'm at full screen, 
and just charging it like this isn't super safe i could eat like a, a super that has hit stop or i could like get you know hold on let me uh okay like if they see me they can totally just call me out and do stuff like that like there's a lot of different call outs but it's sort of like it's sort of a good balance because if they expect me to go in they're gonna want me to get out and if they want me to get out then i'm just gonna get my resources and then once i have my resources i'm gonna be fishing for mistakes right so it's sort of like this long flow charty game plan where it's like okay i'm at full screen i'm going to attempt to go in all right they've They've knocked me away. I'm going to fish for my resources. I've got my resources. I'm going to look for mistakes. Or I would if I didn't lose my charge. <laughs> right? And now I'm in. You've just made a mistake. Right? But if a player doesn't make mistakes, or if they ex know what I'm trying to do, and they like expect me to do something, then you know Squiggly can crumple really easily. Right? right, and if I just don't want her in, and I want to give it a, a different character an easier time to get in, then I can just throw an orb out, go in, and now that I have just a huge hitbox, then I can run in. It's interesting that she's got a, a straight up super that kind of ends up functioning as a neutral tool as well. Yeah, so like this is so like this shouldn't be a neutral tool because if you get hit by it, right, or it goes away, but if Squiggly's not on screen can't get hit by it and so that orb just stays there you know and it just it's just a chotch block until it's gone or unless it gets a hit but if it's hitting you then i'm going in right. or if i'm or if i'm peacock who is just a full screen teleport i'm in man that combo is so dirty it's ridiculous because it also gives me time to get a charge like the fact that i can get into like set play is just disgusting like, I feel like that's one unexplored aspect, is that people really don't experiment with the fact that this is tied to a position on the screen, not a position on the stage. Which is, like, really cool. I don't really... Like, it's... and it, w When your character can do this, it's really cool. She has multiple placement options for that orb, too, doesn't she? Yeah, so she can... There's basically right above her head... Which is good for catching, like, um, a pain wheel is not equipped, but, like, if you want to do this mix-up to catch a jump in, because you could jump over it, you know, or, like, crouch it. So she has, like, it's basically in front of her, angled in front of her, up top, or, like, directly above her. So, usually I don't really use these two options unless I'm trying to stuff an aerial approach. But uh, usually what I like to do is I really just want the ground bounces. I want to extend the time of this super for as long as you can to get my resources. Because that's the thing. For one meter, I can get both my charges, full combo. For one meter, I can get a charge and then tag out. You know, or I could just tag out and allow a separate character to get all of their resources. So the anchor position comes in and just what she contributes to the team comes in and like the game plan is like every character needs to set up something i play like three different set play characters whether it's like projectiles whether it's like the heads whether it's squiggly's charges so squiggly as a character which being in the back always guaranteeing that at one point i will be able to set something up just allows me to at least be enabled throughout the match she's got really good ground buttons so like that this is a disjoint and it's really good because it's a multi-hit, so like I can react to it very generously. The range, uh, you know. Is huge. Yeah, the range is huge. So like, if I I only need is a little dash up, I've got both characters, and I'm carrying you to the corner. And I just killed the character with one normal call out. Big buttons, good air to airs, lots of tools. She has like a Swiss army knife for every situation as long as you have your charges, right? If she doesn't have the tools for it, she can send in a character that does, right? So like she's good independently. She's a good backbone. And you know, I just, when you have fun playing the character, you can do anything. All right, let's, uh... 
Let's talk about after you're done closing the gap. So you've won neutral, now you've got to pressure them, put a little mix up in. What are you doing to open people up with Squiggly? How are you tripping them up? Uh, okay, so obviously being able to cancel your overhead into another overhead, into another low, into a grab, into a jab, into anything, I can basically get as much pressure as I want. Right, so... Right, so there's so much stagger pressure, I'm throwing everything. This is, you can totally mash out of this, but at any point if I feel like I'm gonna get mashed on, I just stop. Right? Right. So, okay. Er, I just got mashed on, hold on. There, I just stop. I just stop and like, so it allows me to call out their mash while being able to choose when there's pressure, but like, if I'm going ham, you know, I can, I can really, I sort of have to get like this mental feeling of if they're going to swing or not, but like, I'm going in. If I'm in and I don't have charges, I'm probably going to do a combo that lets me get my charges. So they're doing the mound bounce, I got my charge, and now I'm going back in. Another mix up, right? Right? So like, my assists help me get my charges in different situations if I need my charges, right? And usually I'm just mixing them up, right? I can pull them out of the corner behind me. I can grab them again. Air grab, overhead. She has every mix-up option that can cancel into any mix-up option. This right here, if you're in a standing position, her charge area cancel has hit stop, which basically is sort of like the game is frozen in this state. So if the game is frozen and I see that they're standing, I can cancel it into a command grab while the game is frozen. So her command grab super, in essence, becomes unblockable, and it's an option select because if I see that they're off the ground, I don't have to do it. So there's just so many mix-up options as long as she has resources. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay, so... So generally speaking, you're going to use this I am going brutal to use stagger pressure to make people trip up and then capitalize. Yep, exactly. If they don't swing, then I'm just gonna swing myself. And if they do swing, then I'm just gonna stop and wait for them to swing and then hit them again. How risky is this this general game plan? Like, how often does it backfire? Very often. It's a lot of just... <laughs> Appreciate the so, honesty. Well, how do I put it? It's... If I'm wrong, I'm wrong and it backfires. But usually, like... It's sort of like instantly downloading things, right? So like I'll do a thing where it's like, I'll do a very similar reset where it's like, okay, here's the first overhead, right? Here's the first overhead, second overhead, third overhead. And then let's say they match me on the third overhead, right? So, so like, er, then I'll know to stop at the third overhead, right? So it's sort of like trying to pick up quirks that your character is doing, using the patterns in your mix-up to call out people, and then condition them not to just sort of stop mashing. If you catch a person's mash once, they will not mash again, at least not for a while. If they do, then... And if I got hit by like two mashes in a row, like if I bait the first mash and then get hit by the second mash, then I'll be jeeved. But like, you know, that's sort of the backfires it works. like. It's sort of like saying, okay, if the player is going to do this, then there's no way that there's going to do this. So if there's no way that they're going to do that, then I'm hitting them. If they are going to do that, I'm canceling it. Right? So it's sort of just like, it's risky, but it's a mix-up. Every mix-up inherently is going to be risky, right? right? But the fact is that I'm throwing all of these out so fast that they like... And like, I have time to correct myself, you know, and I have time to download and worst case scenario, like, like I said, if Squiggly gets hit, okay, I'm not playing this character anymore. She's going to heal up while I go into a different game plan that they have to adapt to. So like I said, the team is meant to be played like a carousel. I have different game plans set up for different situations, right? That poor other peacock just trying to yeah. stop everything. Right, so like my character's really just like 
to never be on the game for too long. I'm always going to be using a different character. So, she's a very sort of like, it's like fencing almost. Or, let me delete that. Hold on, this is push block, right? Yeah, okay. So, her pressure is like, if I get push blocked, that move is still hitting them. If I get like, if I get pushed out, I can do an SBO. They can't push block that and it gives me time to get in again. Right? And then I get at least one high low. Right? So like they're they're set to push block every two hits. And like with meter, I can stay in like as much as I want. Right? And then here's another thing. If I don't have meter, and let's say I don't have resources, right? If they push block me, they just push me away. I just got a charge that they gave me for free. Like, they pushed me out of this danger zone because they push blocked me. So Squiggly is a character that can benefit from getting pushed away and she can use tools to stay in. So it's very like, she sort of doesn't mind whatever happens. Right? So like, I can sort of really adapt to whatever happens because Squiggly is like a really flexible character that can just apply tools or get tools in most situations. Yeah, it seems like she basically nullifies the push block, huh? Well, every character in a way can nullify push block. Like, there's always tools to keep yourself in, right? Right, like most characters can do that, but Squiggly can do that too. But the, I don't think many characters really benefit from being push blocked for free, right? Because like, here's the thing too, right? Is that I'm canceling my normals into more normals as pressure. Right? So instead of just doing the cancel, I can just hold the special and not cancel, and it's almost like a frame perfect. You push block me, I'm getting a charge. Right? Especially if you pick up, like, on, like, um, if you pick up on, like, patterns that your opponent push blocks you, you can really capitalize them on getting resources with this character. Right? So, like, you'll see me just back away from pressure for free and give the character breathing room because I'm going to get a charge. And if the character wants to swing at me, I can just cancel the charge and block it. Or er, hold on. I can bait it with a jump in. Or er, hold on. I can go in. Like, there's so many tools to get me back in. I can do this. And the opponent definitely wouldn't want to swing. I wasn't blocking. Hold on. Like, like, swing, swing at me, I dare you kind of situations. Right. Like, Squiggly can re- there's just so much that Squiggly can do. I wouldn't say she, like, her overhead isn't the best, her low isn't the best, like, you have better options, but the fact that you can throw so many of them out, and, like, in quick succession, and sort of, if you're thinking fast and playing fast, then, like, you can react to anything fast. Right? And like, even, even like, you'll hear this meme a lot where you watch games where it's like, Oh man, you bursted the zoner. Er... You bursted the zoner, congrats, they're at full screen now throwing projectiles at you. You can honestly say the same for Squiggly, where it's like... Yeah, oh wow, I'm at full screen, I'm getting a charge now. You've like, sent me full screen, right? So like... She's- you, you're always gonna be able to do something. Like, there's always a checklist of things that you're gonna be able to do that make yourself more powerful. If you're at full screen, you're getting charges, you're fishing for mistakes. If you're in, you're doing a million mix-up options that are basically very generous in how you, like, just stop doing the mix-ups. You know, like, I don't even need to frame trap with this character. You can frame trap with this character, but you don't have to. You know, I'm free to just throw out a normal and then back up and, like, down back or up back. One mix up I like to do in the mid screen is I like to do launcher. Most Skullgirls players will think, okay, they're delaying their launcher, they're gonna go in for a grab. Which I can do, right? That is also a mix up option. But what I like to do is I like to do launcher, stance, run under them. You know, because usually what they'll do is they will throw out an air normal and not autocorrect. So unless the air normal hits behind them and has low startup, they're not hitting me. Since this crouching low also hits on both sides, so like I can really be just. I don't even need this to autocorrect, right? I can make it safer by calling Robo, so we're hitting from both sides into that mix up option. This is 
is why I can't block in this game. Yeah. Stuff like this. So, other stuff like... I can use the assist to mix up, right? This assist is crazy. This assist is really unsafe because Peacock stays a lot on screen. I have actually found something out that's very interesting with this assist, though. Right? So, it's sort of like my own little tech, right? So... Um, there is like a soft collision with assists in this game, right? So for example, right, uh, this is uncharged silver cord, or just like uncharged get over here. Grab into uncharged get over here does not work on most characters, right? Because they, they get pushed too far away. So in cases where I'm scrambling and I don't have the assist, I can call my assist, grab, and abuse the soft collision for a conversion. Oh, so their their body is like hitting the assist. Their body, body like their body is sort of getting blocked. Like you'll see them sort of see how like they get slid into oh. Peacock's body. So it's a soft collision. They're not going past that assist. So this assist that stays out on the screen for a long time is sort of like a goalpost that I can get toss them into for easier conversions. You're creating right. your own mini corner in the middle. Of yeah, the it's like a mini. Exactly, it's a mini corner. That's and sick. there's all. Then there's like that looming a threat. Like I said, there's a shadow. I'm crossing under you, or, you know, setting up a bounce mid screen, right? If I'm over here, you can't really hit behind you. So like, even if you start hitting me, that like that item is gonna come down and hit you for counter hit meaty damage. So, like, her assists help her, but they're not needed. Like, just fundamentally, she has every tool. She has an overhead, she has a low, she has a grab. She has a command grab with meter. She has a way to nullify push block. She benefits from getting pushed back. I don't really see any, like, positions where, oh no, I've fallen in this position as squiggly. I, there's nothing I can do right now. There's always something this character can do, which sort of supplements that great anchor for me, because I always get something to do. Next topic normally for me would be Oki. I don't know uh, how heavy uh, Oki is yeah. in this game, because I know it's really a reset heavy game. But maybe we can talk about some resets you use and how you trip up with them. But if there is good oh. knockdown Oki that you use, let's go through that. See. Well. So I guess if you want to say Oki, she like from a Dragon Ball perspective, she has what's in essence fat boo toss or fat toss. This stagger lets you create mix-ups, which you can sort of use. Right? So, oh, which side? Which side? Oh, I'm over here. Like, um, you can grab from stagger, so, like, that grab setup can be comboed into. Uh, I guess she doesn't really have any. So, there are some players. There's two ways to cause hard knockdown with squiggly, right? Or sliding knockdown, which is basically, I think, I could be wrong, but, like, the two main ones you'll see are uncharged, um, uh, light. Fireball, which you sort of have to link into a stagger because I don't think uncharged nothing really links. Or see, like the combo drop. So that gives you basically what Squiggly is going to do is she's just sort of going to fall back and get a charge, right? Her charge sliding knockdown is um, Fireball Kick or Light Kick, which also does a sliding knockdown. And once again, you're just sort of going to get a charge. And most people are just going to use that bounce to get an orb and get the charges during the orb. Um, but yeah, it's a reset heavy game. So since everyone's in a perpetual state of like standing, you can just sort of do like command normals. So like there's no like air teching in this game. So they're going to fall into my thing. They're low enough to the ground that the startup of their air normals are not going to come out. But also they're going to fall into the startup of my grounded normal, which is throwing out an overhead hitbox. Right, so I can get them behind me from the corner. Right, I can do I can do a low, which stuffs their aerial momentum, while carrying my own. Get over them and hit them with a cross up. Right, so I have that. I have the cross under. I have grab into my assist calls. Um, I'm trying to think. So if I think they're gonna mash, I can space myself out from an air combo where I do this to push them forward. So I have this space for squiggly, but let, while I said they're falling in the air, I'm on the ground already. I'm throwing out a low and this one is disjointed. And then I can confirm that into stagger and then just continue playing the game. 
um, sometimes I, <laughs> I like to create scrambles. So I'll get behind them with this assist and just start going dog ham like on the screen. And I sort of want them to swing so that when they're comboing me, they I fall out of it because, you know, that assist is behind him charging like a huge hit. Right. So, okay, so <laughs> this is also fun. Um, so remember what I talked about at soft collisions with this assist? Right. So, like, uh, there's another thing. It's really hard to pull off, but it's so disgusting. So, like I said, this this move causes a uh, pseudo unblockable that I can, like, see if they're on the ground, right? But if I do it from full screen, they're not close enough, right? But if I do something like call the assist, go over here, the soft collisions bring them closer, and it's uh. a full screen unblockable. <laughs> right? So, like, if I get pushed back, but the assist is still behind them, I can just call them out if they're on the ground. And Peacock pushes them forward. I don't get the level 3 assist, but, like, that's already disgusting enough. I, I, you can keep the change. So... <laughs> Um, I love so that yeah, you're like chuckling to yourself while you do this. Like, well, it's yeah, just so much fun. <laughs> it is fun. It's always fun because it's like I can just spice it up however I want. There's so much style in this game where it's just like, you know, what haven't I used yet? What have I used yet? Do they think they, they will get hit by the third overhead? Why don't I just keep doing it and download when their mashing pattern? You know, why don't I just get reckless and get bursted? But who cares because I can get my charges or who cares because I just got bursted. So like... Let me just call them back in and just do it all over again. Like, it really doesn't matter. Like, Squiggly is good for that kind of stuff. Not really knockdown, Oki, but there is incoming in this game. Do you have any oh. nasty incoming setups to Squiggly? <laughs> yes, I yeah, do. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, That's yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I love this. I've been using this on everyone. So, they're dead. They're crumpling. I got an orb out. I'm walking forward. Oh, they didn't tag. Okay, excuse me. Orb, dash under, they got hit by a mix-up, right? There's also another special property of that orb. Hold on, let me see if I can just set up the orb beforehand. Yeah, so like I can just set up the orb beforehand. So if I set up the orb and I go over, right? I, they're cut, they get hit by a cross-up and then they're landing into a low because they fast fall if they block the hit of the orb. So is that why you're doing the overhead orb as opposed to the diagonal orb? Yes, so yes, they fall them? into it, they fall into it, and like, they also bounce backwards a bit. So like, if I really get the position carefully, right, like what I can do is I can, they get hit by the cross up, and then they fall back and get crossed up again, and they're getting hit by a low. Oh my god. Right, so like, and it's just one meter, right? And if I really want to, like if I'm really sure that they're going to get hit by the, like, the, uh, the orb, what I can do is I can just do that and then run up and tag into a different character. So like, and they get hit by the mix-up in and then the character starts doing what like they want to do. Yeah, and then like, if you really want to like be evil, like I've created like, I really like, if I'm in the lead, I always love putting my opponents in like do or die positions. So it'll sort of be like, okay, I killed a character. Your other character's coming in with no health. Here's a big giant orb. Here's a bomb. Here's my character that's about to blow oh, up. No. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? This is genius. And then, right? So, like, I squiggly just, like, you know, it's just, it's great. But, um, so she can create those situations, right? Other things I like to do are I sort of have sort of, like, my team attack combo, like my Marvel 3 team attack combo, where what I'll do is I'll put down a bomb with Peacock, I'll send out the orb, and then do a super with Robo, and then just all three are coming at you from full screen. Right? I I love that finisher. I love. <laughs> does that do like crazy chip? It does do crazy chip. Hold on, let's see how much chip. I mean, we're at. Okay, so hold on. I mean, it is five meter, but let me see how much chip that does. I should see where the health value is. Not definitely not going to do 30, but it's like I put down the bomb, send out the thing. I'm hitting you with this super. That's like that was like 20, 25. That was like 25 percent, 28 percent chip. Like there was a little bit of chunk level. That's basically like a quarter of your health bar for free, you know? Or not for free, it was five bar, but like, that's the thing too, is that mo be it's so easy for me to build a five bar 
because I really love doing mix-ups instead of sort of finishing my food. It's a big problem in tournaments, but I always have the five bar, which is sort of just... It's sort of just really just all invested in Squiggly for when she eventually comes in and just starts doing her set play. Right, and like setting up other characters and stuff like it's it's all just carousling it's this character is going to set up for the next character i'm not relying on when i die to start playing the next shell it's i'm going to switch in and play like however dynamic let's, uh, i want let's talk about defense with squiggly because sometimes you gotta block this game defense is hard <laughs> okay hard so but you've got a dp so i do i do so um, there's different properties to the specials, like her Uncharged Dragon Punch actually isn't, um... It does not have invincibility, like, all the way through on startup. Squiggly has this cool thing where... So, Dragon Punch is a separate special. Most of her specials are assigned to just Fireball Forward, and you enter the same stance, right? So you enter the same stance, but, like, you're doing a different special based on the intensity of the button you held. Dragon Punch is... Uh, dragon motion, that like dragon punch motion, and it doesn't matter which button. So like if I hit medium or light, it comes out. Heavy punch, when you do it, has a special property where it does it immediately. If I do the heavy punch motion, even if I hold it, it's gonna come out immediately to like make it easier to do like a proper DP, right? This move also has strike and vulnerability. So the reason I wanted to choose double is cause, um, like, it's not the best reversal, but... Let me record playback. What move was that? Was that the fireball? What? This one? Yeah, this is fireball light punch. This is like her... I don't know what to describe it. Like, like stomach punch or... But yeah, it has like a little bit of strike and vulnerability. So what you can do is... Or if I can get the timing right. Right? Like, you can just... The car will whip you. I don't know if you can do it with... Uh, yeah, I tried to do it with, like, heavy DP. I know what you can do, however, and this is much easier. If I have it charged, I'm through it, right? So, like, there is defense there. And obviously... I have a question. You don't have to go through the stance to use a DP, but if you have a charge, it affects the properties of your DP? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, this DP, I do not need to go through the stance. Or, I'm going through it, but... Because of the way the special works, where it's automatically going through the stance into the special, the entirety of it, like from startup, I believe is like a true DP. Like I'm invulnerable, okay. right? So, and I think th the property with this too is that you'll find that squiggly specials auto correct a lot because the 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 stance counts as a special, and the actual special counts as a special. So, like if I launch, or hold on. Uh, Hey, when I do this to myself, right? Like I can just, uh, I didn't, I was walking forward, but it automatically auto-corrected because technically they sort of do count as different specials, right? Ah, so the side <laughs> corrected there? So the side corrected there, even though I was walking forward, right? Like it's not like I walked forward and then did it forward. It's... It like auto corrects for it. I'm letting go of the button. I'm not holding an input. It just automatically auto corrects because of the game engine. But it happens a lot because both count as specials, Got right? It. Okay. So it's sort of like an interesting little. It, it comes up more frequently than you think, but it's like um, you know. So let me see. So Squiggly's defense. Uh, it's basically just sort of hoping that. You know, they back off because squig like you know, DP is like really strong. Right? Which is like very good and helpful. Usually, like I said, carousel team, it's if I'm getting hit, I'm not playing squiggly. I'm gonna get her out of there with an orb, and then they have to hold that. Right? So her defense is just throwing something out and saying goodbye. <laughs> if she's by herself, I sort of, like, a big thing too is, like, her level 3 is really good, because it's another super that they have to hold. It doesn't go unless she gets snapped, but if she gets snapped, she has to, like, get out anyway. So, like, for example, let me... Okay, so, like... 
right? Like, that character can't do anything. And then another situation is, right, like, if I, hold on, if I do that again, right, and the character behaves properly and snaps, well, they've just snapped squiggly. And then I have an easier time dealing with defense because I'm dealing with a scrap incoming mix instead of just like pressure that was like really hard to deal with, right? Right. So, but I guess just normal defense would be like just level three and go into it. Um, sort of just trying to get a button out of my own in defense or Right, so we play like these little games of footsies with Squiggly. Sometimes I lose, sometimes I can mash out my uh, command grab. So this command grab, if they're on the ground, they get hit by it. So that's also a reversal, which is like helpful. And it's good for like PBG seeing it. Sometimes it's hard because if you push block them, you could sort of just like set yourself up. But I uh, like that gets me in sometimes. Uh, a thing with this team, which isn't squiggly related, but it helps, is that, um... So, because, like, the team is based on carouseling, I'll what I'll do is, I'll, like, I'll get Robofortune in. Let me delete this. I'll get Robofortune in, and I'll bank 3 meter on her detonation mode, right? So then, and then I'll tag back into squiggly. So, I'll sort of want them to abuse the fact that I sort of have very predictable, like... How do I... Okay, that I, I have predictable defense options because of alpha counter, which is for one meter, you can sort of put a character into the position that you were in as long as you were blocking. So like, and if I have debt mode, if detonation mode is active, Robo will immediately blow up the frame she comes on screen. No matter what the is, counter was at? What? Does it like count down no, on screen? No, it doesn't, it doesn't. If she tags in or if she alpha counters in, the detonation is immediate. <laughs> That's yeah, sick. so like, so I she's always going to explode with an alpha counter. It's not like I have to like set her down to the timer. So like, just to show that with like with more clarity, her timer's at 10. I've set it to 20. I've tagged into Squiggly. Or er, she's tagged in, she's blowing up. Right? Like, we'll do that again. Tag in, timer at 20, tag into Squiggly. I'm getting hit in the corner. Uh, I didn't block. Alpha counter is weird. I alpha counter. They're getting hit. That's right. Wild. So it's sort of like another mind game. Sometimes I'll tag a lot. Sometimes a lot of it is just if Squiggly's in there because I chose to carousel her in. It's, um, you know, get her out of there with a super that she doesn't have to like worry about because like I'm out of there. And again, if Squiggly's by herself, then usually if I'm in pressure, it's going to be like, you know, just her generic, like, I'm going to DP out of there. I'm going to super out of there. I'm going to hold block and throw out a normal and pray out of there. This is where you uh, should put it. Anything we uh, haven't touched on that you want to touch on? Let's see. I really like her tag because she has an interesting, every character has an interesting tag that operates on a different thing. Squiggly's is hers. I really like it because just... It's another thing to pay attention to. It's sort of like its own little set play thing, right? It's its own little projectile. It's like a trap. So like if I get a character in, there's Squiggly's thing, right? Like, hey, I hit you, but then I tagged into Squiggly and mixed you up. There is, her tag in is so interesting because I can also do something like this where I can sort of abuse the thing. So like, I, <laughs> I love doing this, right? Her thing, lags behind you and robo is a very fast character she goes in very fast right so i like to do this where i like to launch her the opponent or er, hold on run all the way to the other side of the screen right and then tag in squiggly because if they start trying to chase me squiggly will be behind them so hold on okay Right? You can't even see it, but it'll autocorrect to that side of the screen because it has to. Right? Because of the way- so it's sort of like abusing the camera in a way, but I really do love that mix-up. It's really good for push block pressure, too, because if you push block and tag, like, the character gets push blocked, but I've already turned behind them. And people really- yeah, it's- it's crazy. Um... 
She's really good for BM. I love BMing. You know, I can just make you hold this ridiculously long combo. What is BM? Uh, I don't know if I know that actually. Uh, <laughs> bad manners. So I, uh, it's it's always fun to like mess with people that you play, get in that mental damage kind of way to play, you know. So like Squiggly has the tools for that as well. Like she has a secret level five where if you taunt and have one charge, you can. It's literally just a raging demon. So it's like she's a really, she's really good for entertaining the crowd if you're ever in a tournament because like. You could always like do that as like a finisher because you can combo into it, or er. because it since it counts as like a command grab. You, uh, oh wait, I don't have it. My bad. Yeah, taunt. The input is whack. There we go. Yeah, see, you can combo into it. So I always love being a showman with Squiggly and going for like the really stupid stuff. Doing a million mix-ups is like fun for people watching. I always love doing the moon bounces. Or er, I did that wrong, hold on. What's a moon bounce? So a moon bounce is where you send them to the moon and then do a property that bounces a character but keeps the bounce property so like they'll return to the like the the y-axis so like, oh, hold on, let me see if I can do this. Right? I just bounce them from the moon, and I send them back up to the moon with that moon bounce. Gotcha. So, it's not a common term, because there's not a lot of moon bounces, but I always love the way it looks when, like, you send a character to the stratosphere. Right? And then keep them up there. Oh, no. How yeah. How did that go for Oh, it can go on for like a really long time. Like, you can just do, um, like, hold on. Like, it's so, you just, you're just holding all of it. You're watching a movie. They're at low health, but like, you can get all five reps of that in a combo. So, like, if I'm way in the lead, I'll just do that for like fun. And, uh, let's see. I don't think there's really much to it left. Triv, if someone came yeah. to you today and said, Hey, man, I'm on the fence about playing Squiggly, but I'm not positive. What would you say to them to convince them? Uh, Why should someone play Squiggly in Skullgirls? Do you want every tool in the game at your disposal? <laughs> do you, do you, like, do, do you want to have fun doing, like, do you like high actions per minute? Are you a StarCraft player? Do you want to play Command & Conquer on a 360 pad while your opponent holds 50 mix-ups? You know, play Squiggly. Fun character. I'm sold. You know? Do you like being able to link anything into anything? Linking your other jab into your other jab is stupid. Hold on, if I could get it done. But yeah, play this character. I love it. Do you have a super saucy combo to show us out with? Uh, I will try. No, I'll just do the different variants. Oh, I got it. I got it. And one more. Bam. Okay, right. that was sick. <laughs> do you want to plug your stuff? Do you have uh, YouTube? I don't have anything to plug. I don't have anything you to got plug. Nothing? <laughs> I'm, I'm just a player. I love the game. I'll play the game. And if I get noticed, then hey, that's nice. But I don't got nothing to plug. I ain't out here. Thanks, though. That means a lot. Yeah, of course, man. All right. You decide, thank you for the you interview. Your mind, just let me know. Yeah, of course. Thank you for the interview. Um, uh, hope, hope to hear more. Hope yeah. people.